you can please take your seats now. We'll start with the, um, with the mayoral candidates forum. Please take your seats. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. God forbid we should get out of here early tonight. You can please take your seats. We'll get started. For those of you that may not have been here earlier, my name is Miguel Castillo. I'm board president of the Glen Cove Community Association. Thank you. We're very happy you're here. I remember candidate forum nights in the past when 20 people showed up. So something has changed, and I'm very, very grateful of it. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to ask for those of you that may not have been here and came in later. I saw some people arrive. Uh, please turn off your cell phones or move them to the vibrate mode. Um, and the bathrooms are located out that way, and there's a set back here. And we're now finally out of, out of um, a refreshment, so too bad you came late. But if you were here earlier, great. Um, I, I want to say, and I keep saying it over and over, I have the greatest admiration and respect for anybody that wants to step up and run for public office, especially in a city like Vallejo, which is so diverse, that has so many opportunities and so many wonderful things and also sometimes so many challenges. So I have great respect for that. I'm going to ask you not to applaud during the forum itself and wait until the end, and you can applaud all you want. Um, I do know that there are two people that I know of that are running for school board. One of them is here. I know that both of them knew about the forum tonight, and they could have both been here. We'll give the one that's here tonight a couple of minutes to introduce himself after the uh, mayoral uh, forum is over. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody. And let's please take the opportunity right now to welcome both of these wonderful candidates. Thank you. The uh, mayoral candidates have different set of questions, although one, the fourth question, will be uh, one of the ones that was asked of the city council people. Um, and these questions were put together by neighborhood representatives based on feedback from Glen Cove residents. Uh, we're going to start with the incumbent first and ask the first question of the mayor. It will then move to Ms. Shively. They get two minutes to answer the question. And after the mayor answers, uh, Council Member Shively will get two minutes. The mayor gets a minute then after for a rebuttal or a restatement. And, uh, and the Council Member Shively will also get a minute. So it's. Two minutes for the person that answers first, two minutes for the person that answers second, then the person that answered first gets a minute, and then the other person, uh, Council Member Shively in this case, will get a full minute also. We have a little bit more time with the mayoral candidates. Um, we've just uh, asked them about the starting point. There was an agreement as to who could start first. So both of them will get to answer two of, the, two of the four questions first, and two of them will answer two of the questions second. So it's fair all the way around. First question we'd like to ask, and we'll start out with the mayor, and the question is for two minutes for our timekeepers. And the question is, asking of the mayor first, is Vallejo suffers from a terrible image problem. What would you do to improve Vallejo's image? Please be as specific as possible. Well, I agree with you. Vallejo does suffer from an image, and we are subject to people saying a lot of things about us that's not true. One of the things that I think it's important that we do is we start cleaning up our city, we start involving ourselves with our city. Council Member Gomes has a program for graffiti. It started off with a bang, people were helping, now people have dropped off. Um, there are organizations in this community who have cleaned up the waterfront and done a number of other things. I think that we improve our image by improving the looks of our city, that's number one. Number two, we as citizens in this community need to ourselves restore our own pride in our city. It used to be people were proud to talk about being from Vallejo and proud to be uh, a Vallejoan, and now people are saying, well, Vallejo is this and Vallejo is that. I don't believe that. I believe Vallejo is a great city. I believe that Vallejo has everything it had before. We just need to give ourselves a little kick in the butt and start moving in the right direction. And I think that the past council has done that. I think the past council have grappled with some very difficult um, issues. We've dealt with those issues squarely. We looked them in the face. We, we dealt with them in terms of our finances. We dealt with them in terms of, of um, stabilizing our um, finances and talking about moving ahead with economic growth. Um, it's going to take a lot of involvement of you, the community, as well as the council. We need to involve ourselves with our school district. We need to involve ourselves with our communities. And I think by doing those things, we begin to build our own pride. And as we build our own pride in our own city, 
we will change that whole image. Do not let people define who we are, what we can do, and what we cannot do. Only we can make that decision. Thank you, Mayor uh, Davis. Question, uh, do, uh, would you like me to repeat it, Council Member Shively? No, I don't think For, so, very thank good. you. Alrighty. Well, the very first thing I would do is get another newspaper in here and get rid of the Times-Herald. <laughs> That single organ has been responsible for more bad press for Vallejo than any other form of media. We can thank much of our reputation to the Times-Herald. As far as making Vallejo more beautiful, we have so much to start with. We have a beautiful waterfront that has always been treated like a stepchild. We have things in this community that people don't even know about. We have more authentic, not copies, authentic Victorian homes than any other city west of the Mississippi. We don't capitalize on it. We need a good PR campaign. We have a lot of very talented writers in Vallejo who would probably be happy to take that on without a huge expense. I would enlist them we would get much better publicity outside of Vallejo than we do inside. We need to get our city back to the point where people don't wince when you say, I'm from Vallejo. We need to say, I'm from Vallejo, and people say, boy, you're really lucky. I hear that's a great town. And we can do that. We have to be better ambassadors of what we have. You're not, not going to be asked to raise your hands, but how many of you are aware that we have a symphony orchestra in town that's going on its 80th year? That we have Vallejo Music Theater that has been around for more than 25 years? That we have Myra Theater Guild that has been here since the mid-40s? And everybody says, what's Myra stand for? Well, now it stands for Myra, but when it started, it stood for Mare Island Recreation Association, and it was formed in 1946. That's a long time. We have a lot of things in Vallejo that have been here, and we need to capitalize on them. Sorry, I wasn't looking. <laughs> I think question number one was a very good opening, but I boo-booed. I needed to give each one of them two minutes to do an opening statement, and I'd like to do that now. We'll start with the mayor, and we'll move on to Council Member Shively, and then when we open with the second question, we'll start with Council Member Shively. Uh, mayor, could you please make a two-minute opening statement, please? Can I ask you a question first? Though? Yes, sir. With respect to the question that we just asked, can I have that minute that you talked about? You sure response? can. Okay. You sure can. Thank you. Um, I was thinking, as, as um, Council Member Shively was talking, you also are important in helping us to make sure our city has a different image. There are events that occur in our community from, we are a very diverse community, as you know, and there are events that occur in our community on a regular basis. And the problem with those events is, is that only the people who are putting on the events are usually the ones who show up. We all need to show up. We can learn so much from the different cultures, people all over this community. When there's an event going on in this community from some other group, you need to be there. Everybody needs to participate. As we begin to start participating, we begin to feel good about our community. And you can also do one other thing. You can start putting the good news out there when people talk about the bad news. You can Facebook, you can use that. Uh, your website, you can use that. Start putting the positive things that are happening in Vallejo out there because there's so much positive going on. Don't let them flood us with negativism. We have so much here to be proud of. Now, Mayor, if you could take two minutes to make an opening statement. Okay. Two minutes. Um, you know, I, first I want to say I have been honored and privileged to be your mayor for the past four years. Um, I say that recognizing that it's been a very difficult and challenging four years. Uh, it has not been easy. But I knew it was going to be challenging from the beginning, and anybody can serve as mayor when there are no problems to deal with and no challenges to face. Um, 
But I think you need real leadership when you have difficulties. And I think you need leadership that brings people together, that's, that's been able to bring about coalitions on the council to get things done. That's what I've been doing over the past four years, is reaching out, trying to build coalitions so that we can get things done. But not only on the council. I've reached out to corporations. I've reached out to state level people. I've reached out to federal people. And doing the things that I need to do to make Vallejo better. Um, our four years, my four years, have not been without uh, incident. There have been a lot of things happening. And I have to tell you that I can't help but believe that the entire council has agonized again and again over the decisions that we've had to make. But we've made those decisions. And irrespective of what anybody says, we've done a lot in four years. We've been through the worst financial crisis we've ever faced. And we've come out of it. We're coming out of bankruptcy. It is now time for us to rebuild our city. That's what I want to be about doing. And that's what you, I'm sure, want to be about doing. And so I, I say to you that even though I don't believe that the next four years is going to be easy, it is going to have its own challenges because contracts are coming up again and we have to deal with some very tough issues. But I think we have people on the council who are dedicated to doing what needs to be done to move our city forward. I am dedicated with a passion for this city. I've been here for 65 years. I love this city. I don't intend to go anywhere else. My family's here. I raised my family here. Okay, I should have gone to Council Member Shively to do the one minute rebuttal on the first question. Could we have you, uh, Vallejo suffers from a terrible image problem. Is there anything you'd like to say? You have up to a minute to do that, and then we'll give you two minutes for an opening statement. No, thank you. I think I said everything I need to say the first, okay. two, first minutes. two minutes. Two minutes for an opening statement. Get three? Can I take the one I did? I'm sure. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you know I'm Joanne Shively, says so right there in front of me. I was born, raised, and educated right here in Vallejo. I'm a retired bank executive, and I have worked here most of my career. I'm an expert in all forms of lending and a specialist in deposits and investments. Financial background that I think our city has utilized over the years and needs in the future. I have also been co-owner of a successful local business, so I know how it feels to be a part of that segment of our business community. I've been on the city council for three terms, and I'm proud to have been in the vi voting minority 95% of the time. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because my decisions have always been in the best interest of all of the citizens of Vallejo. And over time, uh, even though some were questioned when I made them, Usually they've turned out to be pretty sound, so I feel good about that. And you don't have to take my word for it. Just look at my record. Recently, I recovered $2.7 million of general fund loans, and in an earlier term, I recovered over $9.5 million of marine world debt. I've also been responsible for charter changes that put a structurally balanced budget into the Charter General Fund Reserve Policy and a five-year financial plan. The main reason I am running is because Vallejo literally cannot afford four more years like the last four. In this administration, the council majority has wasted more than $15 million. That does not include the cost of bankruptcy. You are all welcome to get a copy of this later this evening. It has all of the figures, and on the back it has a breakdown. Once again, you don't have to take my word for it. It's all fact. It's all available from public records. Thank you, Councilmember Shively. Let's we'll start with question number two, and question number two will go to Councilmember Shively first and then to Mayor Davis. Question number two is, Considering that Glen Cove just went through more than 90 days of a protest takeover of the Glen, Park, Glen Cove nature area, how would you or what would you have done to handle the situation differently and what will you do if the nature area is reoccupied by protesters? In 2007, I spoke with the nucleus of the group that was doing the protest out here. At that time, I suggested compromise. Somehow that turned out to be a dirty word, and it didn't happen. 
So the first thing that I would have done once it became occupied was do something immediately. I would not have allowed this situation to go on and on with nothing being done. And I think that was a major mistake. The longer it was ignored, the more entrenched the people that came here were. Many of them were not from Vallejo. They are professional protesters. They moved on to another protest after this. So were they really interested in our community? Were they really interested in what Glencoe stands for and the sacred site that has been um, um, stated that it was? I don't think so. They came because they do that. They protested trees in Berkeley, and I think they were going to the southwest to do something else. My whole point is I would have done something quickly to stop it. I would not have ignored the situation and let it build to the point where it affected the quality of life of everyone that lived around it in Glen Cove. There is absolutely no reason anyone should have been subjected to drums for an interminable length of time and breaking rules. No fires, no camping overnight. There were several things that were just plain violations of the law, and it should have been stopped early. Mayor Davis, do you need me to reread the question? No, I, I remember the question. All right. Let me explain just one thing to the public. Every member of our council has one vote. Nobody has any more votes than anybody else. Everybody has the same voice. I run the meetings based upon our charter. And if you want to say that you would have done something immediately, why didn't you? You had the same authority everybody else had to do something when that happened. It does not just begin and end in the mayor's office. The mayor can't do anything without the support of the council. And so what did I do during that period of time? I began to meet with people trying to bring about a resolution that was not confrontational, that was not, um, that did not get out of hand. Um, what I would have done differently, what I would have done differently is I would have gotten the residents here in Glen Cove to meet with the protesters and sit down and let them talk together at a, a session so that the residents could talk about what their concerns were because many of them did not object to the, the cause that the protesters had. They objected to how they carried it out. And I think it could have been worked out a little bit differently. But I did not sit around, even though I have um, the same vote as everybody else, I didn't sit around and ignore anything. What I did is I tried to bring people together to resolve the issue. And if you'll talk to some of the other council members, you'll find that I did. Like, for example, Council Member Gomes, she was working with me as we talked to various people. You will find that we were trying to resolve the issue to the benefit of everybody concerned. Probably should have done it a little bit quicker, but the point is it resolved itself and no one, I agree, should have to be subjected to violations of their peace and quiet. I think we could have worked that out. Council Member Shively, you have one minute for response. Thank you. Well, I did try to work it out as early as four years ago, and uh, that, that obviously didn't happen. And in closed session, I brought the topic up many times and spoke about doing something more expeditiously. So it's not like I just sat with my mouth shut during closed session, just like I rarely sit with my mouth shut. <laughs> Let me share one thing with you that you keep hearing repeatedly, that the mayor only has one vote. That is true. But just like the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate, the mayor controls what gets to the council to be voted on. So if it doesn't get there to be voted on, it doesn't matter how many votes someone has. For example, how many years have we been working to get the tobacco ordinance to the point where it could be passed? It hasn't happened. Um, there are apparently reasons that some on the council 
don't think it should uh, occur within our city, that we should not be taxing tobacco and regulating it the same way we are alcohol. It is, nicotine is a drug. Again, I overran, I apologize. You gotta wave that. <laughs> Mayor Davis, you have a minute for a response. Um, <clears throat> if you read our charter and our policies, any member of council has a right to put an item on the agenda. Councilmember Shively knows that. She's put several items on the agenda again and again and again. So I don't control, the mayor doesn't control what goes on the agenda. The mayor does go over the agenda with the city manager. If a council member asks for something to be on the agenda, it's on the agenda. I cannot say no, nor does anybody else have the right to say no. So you should understand that. As far as tobacco ordinance is concerned, uh, if you'll talk to some of the people on the tobacco coalition, you'll find that we've had meetings about trying to get that on the agenda. And that is a staff thing. It has nothing to do with the mayor not wanting to go on there. One of the things that I've learned and we have to learn over and over again, this is not about me. My personal feelings have nothing to do with what's in the best interest of the city. It's about what's in the best interest. So I may disagree with the tobacco ordinance, but if the community wants it, that's what it ought to be. And when, when someone says that, well, you have a different view because you feel differently, that doesn't affect what happens on the council. Okay, thank you. Question number three will go to Mayor Davis first and then to Council Member Shively. Question number three is, what ideas do you have and what direction would you give the city manager and or the economic development staff to attract new business to Vallejo? You have two minutes, sir. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I want to make it clear that Neither council member nor I have any right to give the city manager or the city economic development director directions. Uh, the council established a policy. We can establish the policy together as to what, what we want to happen in terms of attracting new businesses. And one of the things that, that I would do is, is that I would first take care of the businesses that we have here. I would give, give directions, and we've started doing that. Um, take care of the businesses that are here because they talk to other businesses and attract businesses. That's number one. We talk about wanting to bring new businesses in town, but we also have to recognize that every time I've talked to someone in the last four years about coming here, the first thing they ask is, what about your police department? I understand that you guys have a real problem with crime. And they say, what about your schools? I understand that they're in bankruptcy. And what about your streets? I think they're all messed up. And what about your fire department? You have to fix those things if you're going to attract businesses here. You're not gonna get businesses to come here unless we, one, fix our police, fix our streets, fix our fire, fix our schools. Schools are absolutely critical in bringing people to this community. So what would I do? Again, I would talk about one of the things that I'm sure it's going to come up, and that's Measure B. Even though it's not the cure-all to everything, it's a jump start to adding some police back. It's a jump start to reopening some fire station. It's a jump start to fixing some potholes in the street so that we can attract businesses to this community. We can talk about businesses until the cows come home, but unless you have the elements that go with bringing a business to the community, it doesn't matter. Don't let someone say they're gonna bring jobs to this community. If you don't deal with police, you don't deal with fire, you don't deal with our streets, you don't deal with our school, you're not gonna get any businesses, period. Council Member Shively, you have two minutes. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Uh, what ideas do you have and what direction would you give the city manager and or economic development staff to attract new business to Vallejo? Well, we have a new central permit center, center, which I'm certainly happy to see because I've been working to get that and streamline the permit process for well over 15 years. Now we have a new facility, but we need a new culture. We constantly hear complaints that the city of Leo is not business friendly, that it takes forever to get a permit, and we have a problem there. And we've been hearing these same complaints for years. We don't have the same employees now that we did when those complaints started. So that tells me it's a cultural thing. It's being handed down. Now, if our rules and ordinances are so tight that after 25 years, employees are not able to make decisions outside of a little teeny box, then there's something wrong with our rules and ordinances. And no, we cannot, council cannot directly 
say to staff what needs to be done, but we can change those rules and ordinances so that staff has a little, has more latitude and can make decisions. Doesn't have to be afraid if they stick their head up out of their foxhole, they're gonna get blown out of their job. We don't need measure B. I am completely opposed to any more sales tax. What we need are contracts that are sustainable. When we were in bankruptcy, the city council majority cut all street repairs and our total economic development department while at the same time approving raises and free health care for one of the highest paid police departments in California. We need to extract savings. We gave our police six point, a raise of 6.29 when all around us other cities were cutting. I voted against that contract. Thank you. Mayor Davis, you have a minute for response. Well, I also have been interested in making sure that we had a one-stop shop and changing the culture and, making, and um, getting things done for permits. But I was able to get it done in four years, not 15. Um, to get things done, we have to bring about a coalition of people. We have to bring the rest of the council on board and get things done. In other words, whether you have the same philosophy about what, how to get something done should not matter. The motive of what you're doing should be the most important. And so what I have done in my past four years is reached out I hand a reconciliation to everybody on the council. Let's work together and move in the best interests of the city. That's what you have to do if you're going to get things done and change things. Um, in terms of the contracts, you got to do more than just cut contracts. Yes, we need sustainable contracts. Our current budget, our current budget right now projects that we're going to have labor givebacks in the next year's budget in order to balance it. If we don't, it will not be balanced. And so therefore, you, you have to understand that if you just talk about cutting, there's not enough there to cut because we've already talked about cutting. That's how we balanced our budget, if that makes any sense to you. And so you're going to have to do more than just cut contracts. You have to bring about a revenue source. Otherwise, sooner or later, you get right back to where you started from. And so the revenue source, we have to be about bringing in new businesses and working to get uh, businesses who are here sustain those businesses. And how do you do that? You have to fix the streets. You have to bring in police. And I just ask one final question, and that question is, if, in fact, you don't like Measure B, what are you going to do in the next five, seven years? How in the world are you going to change what you say you don't like? How are you going to get police here? How are you going to fix your streets? How are you going to fix the schools? How are you going to do anything in the next five to seven years? Nothing? That's not acceptable to me. Council Member Shively, you have one minute for final response. Thank you. Well, during the 15 years I worked in the permit center, part of that time I wasn't even on the council, and the rest of it, there was not the political will. So if uh, the mayor was able to get it done in four years, that just shows you how much more power that office has than the council member has. You have to have the political will of all of the council to get anything through. This 1% tax is not the answer. After the first of the year, Sacramento is going to be looking at bringing back the 1% tax that they just reduced. So that will make Vallejo, if Measure B passes, at a tax rate of 9.375%, almost 10%. How many businesses are going to be interested in coming to a town where Everyone who shops in town knows they can go over to American Canyon and save money, or they can go to Napo, or they can go to Fairfield. They can go to any of our competition and pay less. If you're buying a small ticket item, it doesn't matter. If you're buying something that is much more expensive, I don't think there's anyone here in this room that wouldn't drive five miles to save $40. We all shop around to see how cheap gas is, that 1% will be added to gas as well. My solution, yes, we need sustainable contracts, and we can save over $5.8 million immediately simply by restructuring them. That's a lot of road repair. 
Thank you. Question number four will go to um, Council Member Shively first and then to the mayor. Uh, the question number four, they've already touched on, so it uh, shouldn't be too surprising here. Question number four is, do you support the ballot measure to increase the city sales tax by 1%? If yes, why? If no, why not? And if it does pass, what will you advocate doing with the additional revenue? Council Member Shively, you have two minutes. No. <laughs> that was a restaurant. What would I advocate doing with the additional revenue if it passes? Yes. Well, if it passes, I have a feeling that based on previous experience, it will go to more employee benefits, more employee compensation, because every time there's been any money coming into Vallejo, no matter what we have wanted to use it for, it has wound up there. What I would like to see it used for, if it passes, streets improving the image of Vallejo, all the things that improve quality of life, restore funding to our senior center, restore funding to our community-based organizations. But I, I am totally opposed to this tax. I only voted to put it on the ballot so that you could vote on it. It is not the answer to our questions. Yes, we need more revenue, but not by taking it out of the pockets of our citizens. We need economic development. Yes, this is true. And if there was a real easy answer to how do we get jobs, 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 I think the federal government would have found it out by now. They're having a heck of a time with that problem too. It's not just a local problem. And they have a printing press in the basement. We don't. Mayor Davis, you have two minutes to answer the question. Do you, would you like me to repeat it? No, I understand it. <clears throat> First of all, I would not drive 40 miles to save $40 or any miles because the dollars that's spent in this city stays in this city. We cannot, we have to recognize that if we're going to rebuild our city, we have to help ourselves also. And so if I can go to Fairfield or I can go to Concord and get something for $2 cheaper or $40 cheaper, I got news for you. I'm staying here because I'm committed to this community because I know every dollar I spend here is going to stay here. It's not going somewhere else. What I spend over there stays there. And then I complain about what's going on in the city, why we don't have this, why we don't have that. We take our sales tax dollar out of the city. Let's bring it back in. That's the pride thing I'm talking about in our city. Um, what is my plan? Yes, I'm for Measure B. And you'll see that I wrote the argument along with Vice Mayor Wilson for Measure B. Um, I think it is a jump start. It is not the save all. I think that it gives us an opportunity to do those things that we need to do to do all the things that you say you want. Fix the police, fix the streets, and so on. You've heard that over and over again. And, and, and Council Member Shabby said based on previous experience is going to go into benefits and salaries. I think that if you look at the last four years, you'll see that's not going to happen. In the last four years, we've adjusted the fire contracts, we've adjusted IBW contracts, they, we have reduced the pension, the fire no longer has 3% at 50, they have 2% at 60, that's for the new people. The people who are already here, they're paying the difference between 3% at 50 and 2% at 60, so it reduces our obligation. People have changed the medical. We've changed the medical now where retirees no longer get 100%. They get a flat $300. We've changed the longevity. No longer get longevity where they just get automatic bump just because they've been in public safety for the last 15 years. They have to work here. We've cut the amount that they pay for sick leave from 100% to 75 percent. We've cut the amount that they can get when they leave the city. They don't get to build up that bank in sick leave. I have to stop. Council Member Shively, you have one minute for a response. Well, I noticed that the police department was uh, very noticeably left out of that last narrative. In June, excuse me, July of 2010, our police department got a 6.29% raise. In July of this year, they are due another raise that may be as much as 1.3%. We won't know until next month because the comparable cities will not have settled until then. 
So our police department has gotten about 7.5% raise, while everybody around us has been taking 10% cuts. This wonderful pension reform that has been done, not going to knock it, it's better nothing, but it starts with new hires. It doesn't start with existing employees, meaning it doesn't have any significant savings to the city for 20 years when those new employees retire. Better than not at all, but don't plan on it to fix your street tomorrow. The fire contract, yes, there were savings, but they were $1.2 million short of what we needed. It's $1.2 million year one, $1.2 million year two. It was also short $146,000 of retiree health cost each of those two years. Middle management contract, no change. The only change that occurred between police and middle management was that their health care is now capped Thank you. at Kaiser North. Thank you. Mayor Davis, you have a minute for a response. All right. I, I don't have enough time to answer the question thoroughly, <clears throat> so I'm certainly willing to talk to anybody afterwards. But I didn't conveniently police out at all. Let me just tell you about police. When we approved the police contracts at the time, there were a lot of things going on. We were in bankruptcy. We were told by our attorneys that we needed to show good faith and work out some kind of deals. We got more than just um, a contract with the police. They did do some cutting. I don't have time to go through all that now, and I'll tell you that if you want to ask me afterwards. But I will say this. At the time that we approved those contracts, we were concerned about public safety, the same thing you're concerned about now, safety in this community. And our finance director projected that our revenues for that year was going to be uh, $79 million. The following year, the revenue was supposed to be $81 million. The following year, the revenue was to be $83 million. We believed that we were going to have the revenue to do that. That was the basis of that. And that was a recommendation coming from the city manager, from the um, finance director. And you can go back and look at the report, and you'll see what was all involved in us making that decision. Um, I will never apologize for wanting my community safe. All right. That's the end of the four questions. We started out the questions with Mayor Davis. We will start out the closing remarks, two minutes each, with Council Member Joanne Shively. You'll have two minutes, uh, up to two minutes if you need it, and like to take it. Council Member Shively, your closing remarks, two minutes. Thank you. I just want to address one other item before I move into the closing remarks, and that is that on the night the police contract was approved, or immediately prior to that, our finance director said, we will be $12 million short. And uh, that didn't seem to get remembered for some reason or other afterwards. So it's not like we didn't know. Also, he said, when I asked, what are the revenue projections to cover that, we don't have any revenue projections at this point. And we did, police did cut, absolutely. They cut staff down to 90 from 103 because they said in negotiations, this is on tape, we don't care how many of us you fire, we want our money. So yeah, they cut. Okay, as your mayor, I will focus on restructuring city government, developing a plan for long-term financial stability, partnering with other agencies to reduce expenses, making government more transparent and business customer friendly, fixing our streets, improving Vallejo's image, and promoting inclusiveness. All that without Measure B, because we have the money. We just have to get to it. I will use every opportunity to promote Vallejo's image and unify our city, and I will represent everyone equally without bias or prejudice I will not make disparaging remarks about any individual or any group in our community. My only special interest group is the citizens of Vallejo, all of its citizens. To get your input over the years, I've had more town hall meetings and created more citizen advisory groups than any incumbent or candidate. I've listened to you and I will continue to listen. I'm here for you, and we'll have an open-door policy. Vallejo needs and deserves a full-time mayor, 
being retired, I can make that commitment of time and energy. Thank you, Councilmember Shively. <laughs> Mayor Davis, closing remarks, two minutes. Thank you. Thank you for all of you coming out and participating in the forum, irrespective of who <clears throat> you support and who you're going to vote for. It's important that we participate <coughs> in the forum. I, as I said earlier to you, I've been your mayor for four years, and I have been honored to serve. And I think if you check my record, you will find that my record of voting in this city has been a record that says I care about everybody and everybody's interest in this community. There is not one thing you can find in my record that shows that I have any um, thoughts about um, representing anybody differently. We're all human beings. We all live in a city together. Um, I have worked hard to bring about forward progress in our city. You've, ta you've heard council members talking about doing various things. You've heard other people talk about what the city needs. I have been about doing those things. I have been about getting things done. Council Member Shavi talks about um, being a full-time mayor. I have been a full-time mayor for the last four years, more than full-time. I've been working my butt off to get things done in the city. And, and what has that produced? It's produced a lot. We produced a contract with Ty Kaiser Hospital that gave us a grant that allows us to hire three more police officers. What else did it produce? It produced monies from um, the federal government to pave some of our streets. It produced um, 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 an agreement with, um, I'm not, not agreement, it produced um, revenues for our seniors, for our youth, and for preschool reading programs. I, I recognize that we lost a lot of money, revenues, over $22 million in about 18 months. And during that time, what I did was I went out to find ways to raise money. I don't sit back and think about, woe is me, we don't have this. I look for ways of getting things done. And if you want a mayor that wants to get something done, and if you want a mayor who can bring people together to make things happen, then I'm your mayor. You've all kind of jumped the gun on me, but um, first of all, I want to, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all of the candidates accepting the invitation of the Glen Cove community to come and talk to us and let us know their positions and their philosophies and the things that they'd like to do for the city of Vallejo. I think they would all agree that the important part is that you vote, that you become involved, learn more about their positions. If you don't know, ask them. Many of them have already given you their websites. And we're trying to uh, have some information over there on that table for those that have staff that brought some literature and it'll be available on that table. Otherwise, I urge you to become informed so that you make the votes that you'd like to make. Again, now join me, please, and thanking so much uh, Councilman Chively and Mayor Davis. Thank you. Thank you.